what is the purpose of astrology without the remedy if you know what is going to happen but if you cannot change it what uses is into knowing it can give you anxiety only <laughs> right remedy is not only performing remedy but it is also planning how to do things knowing the nature of things changing it this is what science is science also does the same thing right by knowing something knowing its course of action origination and all of that it changes the outcome or tries to change the outcome for that right in astrology remedies also serve the same thing. right so first of all you should know what is going to happen in future then you should know how it can be avoided it can be done with respect to you know changing your habits first of all when you know what is going to happen you can prepare yourself accordingly and then you can try to avoid it also for example if someone knows that they are going to suffer from anger issues from their part in marriage they should try to control it take corrective measures such as meditation etc right listen to people and have a habit of listening over speaking right don't be impatient and you know learn the methods of controlling anger but it is easier said than done so people also take help of spiritual methods and time and over with the hindu dharma being in practice for more than 7 8000 years now it is a well proven fact that the spiritual remedies work ours is the only religion which believes into it many religions does not believe in spiritual remedies as such right our religions believes into it and it have proved it to time that these works the mention of remedies stotra chanting worshiping gods and their results you will find in ramayana mahabharat in multiple of our puranas and at multiple places right but before we but you know in this section of remedy i have one particular approach you know if one wants you can give one remedy for all the nine planets 12 houses 12 rashis but then is it practically possible to do all of these remedies can someone who is into a regular life have to go to office you know see to a job right have a family to maintain can they do all of these remedies so my approach to astrology has been very simple first of all suggesting minimum remedies as possible so that one can easily carry out in their day to day life generally what i have seen children when they are in college they are very much enthusiastic people before marriage they are very much enthusiastic that i will do a lot of remedy but later on it eats up their time and then they are not able to give the time properly to their profession to their family so then become some issue so my prime purpose have been to give minimum of remedies which one can carry out for long and to give stronger remedy right two three remedies for planet giving two three remedies for every planet is just only indicates the inefficiency and lack of expertise by the one who is suggesting it all right absolutely this is the same with any system any any branch of knowledge but so see you no know, this in this horoscope before you go to remedy the complete horoscope is the success of horoscope is controlled by a planet and the failure of horse which leads to obstacles problems hurdles disappointments in life is also controlled by one planet or more than one planet right so my prime purpose is to first identify that planet what i call the happy planet the planet is happy it indicates a set of karma it is here to give you a set of result the planet is happy he will make you happy the angry planet is specifically angry on your karma and he is here to give you obstructions obstacles etc so that you have time to rethink over your actions and all of this right 
So first of all, finding the happy planet and finding the angry planet is important. And then there is a protector planet. Like, you know, like the, the there is the, the protector, we call it guardian. The one who protects you from the world, the one who teaches you how to live in the world, you can call it guardian, god father, right? This can be mother, this can be father, this can be a sibling, this can be an elder friend. So there is one protector planet as such also. What I think, what I have seen in my practice is that you should pacify the angry planet. Do mantra chanting for them, visit temple of the particular planet, and do pacifying remedies for the planet, Oma, Japa, and all of these things. You strengthen the happy planet by wearing the gemstone, chanting the mantra, wearing the metal of the planet, etc. And always remember, chant mantra, go temple of the protector planet. Right? So for, first of all, let's learn how to find it. In a horoscope, you know, you should know, in a horoscope, the Kendra house is 1, 4, 7, 10 houses of horoscope. And the Kona houses, 5, 9 houses of the horoscope are the houses where benefic planet Jupiter, Moon, Venus, and Mercury are happy. Right? In the Upachaya houses, 3rd, 6th, and 11th house, malefic planets, Saturn, Rahu, Mars, Sun are happy. Right? So this is housewife happy. Planets in these houses are happy. In other houses than the one mentioned, they are not happy, unhappy. In 11th house, every planet is happy. So 11th house, I will not say that, you know, 11th house, I will not say that any planet is bad. In second house also, the planet is only happy when he is powerful, exalted, own sign, mood, tripona, verbottam is good, otherwise not. So to say, if Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Moon are in the second house, not powerful, in the third house, in the sixth house, in the eighth house, in the twelfth house, they are problematic. Saturn, Mars, Sun, Rahu. When they are in the first house, in the second house, and not strong, in the fourth house, in the fifth house, in the seventh house, in the eighth house, in the ninth house, in the twelfth house, they are problematic. In tenth house and eleventh house, every planet is good. Out of these planets, there can be multiple planets having this setup. Right, being situated in these houses that I have mentioned. Out of all of these planets, you have to see the one who is in a bad Rashi also. So first of all, the preference should be given to a planet defeated in a planetary war. A planet very close in degree with two degree difference to some other planet. Planetary war only happens between Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. If any of these two planets are very close in the same degree, in the same sign, almost two degrees apart maximum, they are in a planetary war, this is the worst plan. Followed by the planet who is combust. Combust is 10 degrees either side of sun, before sun or after sun, in the matter of combustion. The planet need not be in the same sign, they can be in different signs, different rashes also. Little better than combustion is debilitated planet, right? Sun in Libra, Moon in Scorpio, Mars in Cancer, Mercury in Pisces, Jupiter in Capricorn, Venus in Virgo, Saturn in Aries, right? Rahu, you can take it uh, as debilitated in Sagittarius, Ketu. You can take as debilitated in Gemini, right? Debilitation is bad. And if none of these three conditions are happening, then the most powerful planet in angry houses that I have mentioned before. This most powerful you can decide as per Sadhguru. The most powerful planet in the angry house is the disturber planet. Right? It's the angry planet. On the other hand, planet in the 
good houses for themselves are the happy families. Like the houses that I have mentioned. I think the men, I have clearly mentioned it. So there is no point of confusion. If there is a confusion, you can start watching the video again. So I will take an example of it. Like that will make you understand how it has to be seen. Right? For example, take this chart. Here, what you see, one by one, every planet, moon is in the second house. Not strong as such, because it is in Capricorn, which is not good for moon. So this will go into angry planet. Let me write A, angry. Saturn in third house is happy. Jupiter in fourth house is happy. Sun in fourth house is angry. Mercury in fifth house is happy. Rahu in fifth house is angry. Venus in sixth house is angry. Mars in seventh house is angry. Ketu in eleventh house is happy. Now, out of these happy planets, if you see the most powerful one, powerful, exalted planet is most powerful, followed by planet in Mula Trigona sign, followed by planet in Un sign, followed by retrograde planet. Now, if you see, Mercury is happy, Jupiter is happy, Saturn is happy, Ketu is happy. Out of Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn and Ketu. Ketu will give result of Mercury according to me as I have always told you. Nodes, Rahu, Ketu give result of the planet they are conjoined. If they are not conjoined with any planet, they give result of the planet who is respecting them. If no planet is respecting them, they are giving the result of the Rashi. So here Rahu is with Mercury and Mercury aspects Ketu. So Rahu, Ketu both are giving the result of Mercury. And Mercury in Libra is friendly sign only. So Ketu is friendly sign. Saturn is in his Mool Trigona sign Aquarius. Jupiter is in his own sign Pisces. And Mercury is an inimical sign. So out of this, Saturn, which is in Mula Tripona sign, is the happiest planet. So, happy planet for the horoscope will be Saturn. Now, because Saturn is the happy planet, what needs to be done? This planet wants to do good for you. Make this Saturn powerful. How you will make this Saturn powerful? Have the approach of Saturn. Saturn is servant, love your servants. Saturn unconsciously help others, so unconsciously help others. One can wear a blue gemstone also. Saturn is a significator for iron, so one can wear iron jewelry, iron ornaments also. If wearing iron does not, you know, if, if you are not comfortable wearing iron, which many people are not, you can cook food in cast iron utensils and then eat it. Right? These things needs to be done. The happy planet needs to be strengthened, needs to be made powerful. The planet is made powerful by wearing the gemstone of the planet, by using the metal of the planet, and by being like the planet. So learn the story of Saturn, read the stories of Saturn, learn about the nature, behavior, character of Saturn, and be like the planet. If the planet have a negative tendency, don't take the negative tendency, but take the good tendency. Now coming to the angry planet. As you can see, moon is angry. Sun is angry. Rahu is angry. Venus is angry. And Mars is also angry. In this setup, Jupiter and Sun are degreeically very close. In the same degree, Jupiter is combustible. Right? But Jupiter is a happy planet. So this is not to be considered. If there are two planets in a planetary war, full planetary war, I, what I told you, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter. These five planets should be in the same Rashi, same line. Any of these two planets are not together, so planetary war does not occur. Combustion occurs to Jupiter, but Jupiter is a happy planet, so it is out of question. Now coming to debilitation, none of these planets are debilitated. In this particular scenario, one has to use the shadow to find the most angry planet. 
Now, if you go to schedule for this particular horoscope, what do you find? Sun is having 130. Moon is having 121. Venus is having 153. Mars is having uh, 142. And Rahu, Rahu is giving the result of Mercury. I told you Mercury is having 95, so give 95 to Rahu also. Out of these moon 121, Sun 130, Rahu 95, Venus 153, Mars 141, Venus is having 153 point. Venus is the angriest. So angry planet is Venus. Now because Venus is angry, what needs to be done? Pacification. Pacify the planet. Pacification should be done with the use of, by donation, by mantra chanting. If you respect someone, they will be pacified. So respecting the relative represented by Saturn, represented by Venus. Venus indicate woman, Venus indicate wife. He, right? So respecting woman and wife, here it is the sixth house lord. So respecting maternal uncle or siblings of the mother and it is 11th house law, right? So respecting the wife of your child because it is 7th from the 5th house, right? Will be pacifying Venus. So respect any female, respect any female. So respect mantra chanting, donation and other methods of pacification of Venus, installing Venus Yantra and all of these things should be done for Venus. So this way, first of all, you should find the angry planet and you should find the happy planet and strengthen the happy planet more, pacify the angry planet. This is the only remedy, in my opinion, that you need to make your life successful. The remedies for these planets you do constantly for one year. You will see a great change in your life. That is from my side, my guarantee. Whichever people have done the remedy of these planets continuously for one year, with utmost dedication and devotion, their life after one year is entirely changed. They have become more happy, more prosperous, more affluent. Right? And this I am saying after giving such remedies to hundreds of people. Right? I think I need not share you a fake story regarding how I did this, how I did that. Right? But the people to whom I have given it are the testimony to it. And if you cannot believe the words of the Guru, I cannot give you a proof as well. Yeah. Right. So this you should do. And once you do it, then you will understand the difference that it has created in your life. After one year, you will look back. And... Now, another point is protector. So what happens? You see, when you are trying to break free from, you see, it is very easy to get into negativity. To remain into negativity, it automatically grows up. But if you have a bunch of group of negative bad friends, when you want to come out of their company, they will try to disturb you, harass you using multiple people. They will try to do now, you have to protect yourself against them also. Right? In life also, in the same manner, when you are improving, when you are going at a better place, obstacles and hurdles come. Because people want to take you down to their level of negativity and you are raising up. Or otherwise also, because of you see, when someone is destined to enjoy bad karma, but one keep on doing good karma in the current life, destined to enjoy bad karma because of past life karma, but one continues to do good life karma in this life, between the bad experiences, good experiences also come. Right? So that is like loss of job have given you a child. So this good result have came, birth of child, but loss of job is also. On the other hand, if the person is enjoying good karma because of past life karma and continues to do bad karma, then what happens? 
the obstructions created by bad karma comes in between. Right? Obstruction created by bad karma comes in between and that tries to disturb the negative. Right? For an example, you say if the person keeps on doing enjoying but does bad karma, then what will happen? Some accident will happen, some disease will happen, which will disturb the person. Will not let him enjoy the happiness because currently he is doing bad karma. In all the situation, whatever be the case, whether you are coming out of negativity and, you know, whether you are coming out of negativity and the situation, the circumstances are not letting you go out and you want to protect yourself. Or unconsciously somehow, some bad karma you may have committed. Intentionally or unintentionally, because many things we commit unintentionally also. Is it our fault that we have committed something unintentionally? Certainly not. But the point is, if one is always aware of this unintentional, why it is told never get angry? Sometimes anger can be good also, but 80% of the time it is bad only. If you never become angry, then this 80 times when you can unintentionally do some mistake, you can avoid it. Right? If you have a calm and cool disposition. This is why it is told to be attentive, think everything that you do, uh, remove these bad habits from your life. All of these things are said for this purpose only. So whatever be the case, whether you have unintentionally done some bad karma, to which planet you will seek forgiveness? Right? Talking of planets, because planets are also connected to DT. Right? So basically DT. To which DT you will seek forgiveness? To which DT is your parent? That will save you from the absentees, ups and downs of the life. This is found using the chhatra. Okay, chhatra is umbrella. So this DT is holding the umbrella over your head so that you can save yourself in the rainy season. You have to pray to this planet. So first of all, I will tell you how to find this planet. Then I will tell you a concise list of, like not a very extensive one that I generally teach, but a very concise list of which deities are ruled by which planets. So that for all the three purposes, for the happy planet, for the angry planet, and for the protector planet, you know which deity to worship. Okay. So first of all, the process is simple. You will have to remember one. When the sun is into Taurus, When the sun is into Gemini, when the sun is into Cancer, and when the sun is into Leo, the BP is in the Rashi Aries, wherever it's falling. When the sun is in Pisces, when the sun is in Aries, when the sun is in Virgo, and when the sun is in Libra, the BP falls into Rashi Taurus. And when the sun is into Scorpio, when the sun is into Sagittarius, when the sun is into Capricorn, and when the sun is into Aquarius, the BP falls into Gemini. Right? So this is regarding the BP calculation. Second point is Aru. Second thing what you will need, Aru. You have to find the Aru of the Ascendant. So Ascendant Lord and Aru. I will make a table. If the Ascendant Lord is in Ascendant, Aru will be in the Ascendant. Ascendant Lord in second house, Aru will be in third house. Ascendant Lord in third house, Aru will be in fifth house. Ascendant Lord in fourth house, Aru remains in fourth house. Ascendant Lord in fifth house, Aru goes to ninth house. Ascendant Lord in sixth house, Aru goes to eleventh house. Ascendant Lord in seventh house, Aru goes to tenth house. Ascendant Lord in 8th uh, house, Arur goes to 3rd house. Ascendant Lord in ninth house, Arur goes to 5th house. Ascendant Lord in 10th house, Arur goes to 7th house. Ascendant Lord in 11th house, Arur goes to ninth house. And Ascendant Lord in 12th house, Arur goes to 11th house. So based on the position of the Ascendant Lord, you have to find where the Arur is. What you will do, you will find the position of Sun first. Based on the position of sun, you will find the Viti Rashi. From the Viti Rashi, you will count to Arun Rashi, both the Rashi inclusive. And the same number you will calculate from the Ascendant. 
that will give you chhatra chhatra is umbrella so for example take the example horoscope that we have been doing sun is into pisces the chhatra will fall into taurus Lagna Lord is in fourth house. Arur also goes into fourth house. So when you count Chhatra to Arur, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Chhatra to Arur is eleventh house. Now you calculate eleven from the ascendant. It goes to eleventh house, Libra sign where there is Ketu. So basically, Libra is the Chhatra. Now in this chakra, if there is a planet, take the planet. If there is more than one planet, take the strongest planet. If there is no planet, take the Lord. Because chakra is having K2, we have to take K2. K2 is the protector. K2 will protect. That means what? Whenever the problem comes, whenever there is a dilemma, when there, whenever there is a confusion. Resort to the ways of K2. Okay. Worship the deity related to K2. Wear the rosary or metal related to K2, specifically rosary related to K2. Right? Follow the path of K2. Read stories, etc. about K2 practice, detachment, etc. All of these things that you do. This will protect. When you are in a problem, any problem, because you are having bad mood, you are having, you are not able to make a decision, do this. For, you know, if it, do it for three days continuously with utmost faith, not with the purpose of testing, with utmost faith you do it for three days. Right. Visit the temple of the deity which is related to Ketu. Resort to the ways of Ketu. Follow it. For three days you do and if you do not come out of the problem, then you see. You will surely come out of it. The following has to be rigorous. The faith should be there. Right. And then you see. You can even also follow the path indicated by the deity which is which is a Ketu's representation. You can think what the DT must have done in such scenario and based on the stories, etc. connected to the DT, you should come to a conclusion. Right? For example, K2 is related to Shiva. If there is a problem related to marriage, you think what Shiva must have done here. Right? Do it. And once you do it, you see the happiness it will leave you. Right? Shiva is indicated by Ketu. Shiva is indicated by Sun and Shiva is indicated by Jupiter. But Jupiter specifically represents Shiva in the form of Linga, in the form of Shivaling. Sun along with Shiva also indicates Narayan or also indicates Vishnu. It is a mixed root what is known as Hari Har. Right? For Sun, you can follow Sun itself. Aditya Hridesh, Tokla, Nashirpa, Sun temples are also there. Moon indicates Goddess Parvati. So rather than Parvati, you can take Durga, Mahagauri, Brahmacharni, any form of Mother Goddess that you can take. Mars indicates Hanuman. Right, so the follow the path of Hanuman. Mercury indicates Vishnu. So for Mercury, follow the path of Vishnu. Vishnu, Narayan, Krishna. Right? Sun also indicates Rama. For Jupiter, I told you, Shiva in the Linga form is what is Jupiter. For Venus, Venus indicates Lakshmi. Saturn indicates Bhairava. The form of Shiva. Saturn also indicates local deities, Kula Devata, all of this is also indicated by Saturn. And Rahu indicates Saraswati. And other goddesses related with knowledge, such as Saraswati, 
गायत्री राइट सविता एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज गॉडेसेस आर इंडिकॉट गॉडेसेस आर इंडिकेटेड बाय राम वर्शिप देम डू देयर मंत्रा विजिट देयर टेंपल and based on their stories think that if they were in the situation where you are what will they do and this will give you the link these three happy planet angry planet protector sometimes what can happen two of them can be the same happy planet angry planet sorry happy planet protector or angry planet protector can be the same right then you have to do both the type of remedies first specify if the angry planet is also the protector first specify the angry planet then go to the protector part right so you see first start the specifying remedies then after 6 months start the protector remedy. this is what needs to be done so in some cases it can be two planets only generally in normal cases it will be three planets these three remedies for a better because everyone deserves you know what what is this is our birth right everyone deserves a healthy life happy life right whatever is every whatever thing whatever you think that everyone should deserve the basic amenities the basic necessities the basic happiness of life that you think everyone should have in life one can get by following these three planets by doing the remedies of these three planets so anyone in this life if they want to live a full life life of contentment and happiness should follow these three planets specifically found based on their horoscopes for sure and following their path for one year and you say you see how the change starts how the change looks and when you are after the completion of them